This is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in Washington, and we are coming on the air because Hunter Biden, President Biden's son, has just been indicted by a federal grand jury on gun charges. In July, Mr. Biden had entered into a tentative plea agreement with the Justice Department, but remember that deal fell apart after a U.S. district judge in Delaware posed questions regarding the diversion agreement that would have absolved Mr. Biden of a felony gun charge. This indictment comes a week after the Department of Justice Special Counsel David Weiss indicated to the court that his office would charge Mr. Biden before the end of the month. Let's bring in our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge, who joins us now. All right, three counts in this indictment, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, what the indictment lays out is that they allege the president's son, when he had the paperwork that has to be filed to obtain a weapon, that he said on the form that he was not an unlawful user of drugs. And what he stipulated, too, during that July plea hearing, which collapsed, is that it was a false statement. So, as you. So, just to back up for those sure. who haven't been following it sure. very closely. Mm -hmm. Hunter Biden, who is an admitted, was an admitted drug Correct. user and is now in, uh, in therapy for that, he bought a gun. And when you buy a gun, you have to fill out ATF forms and you have that's to right. lawfully state that you are not a drug user or Correct. using substances. He lied on those forms. Yes, that's right. Um, what strikes me about the indictment is that he is being prosecuted for being sort of an unlawful or prohibited person from obtaining a weapon. But I don't say what they call here a false statement charge which was one of the issues that was raised by the court back in July, because it can be a two-pronged prosecution, one for the possession mm -hmm. and then also for the false statement on the form. All right. Let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, Nancy Cordes, who is there. And Nancy, uh, many people close to the Bidens had predicted that this indictment would come at some point. Uh, your reading of the indictment and the reaction there. Uh, well, we're unlikely to get much reaction, Nora, here at the White House. We've asked, but they typically uh, try to stay as far as they, po as they possibly can from Hunter Biden's legal issues. When pressed, when asked, uh, the president has always said that he's proud of his son, that he stands by his son. Um, but as for White House officials themselves, they insist that the White House has nothing to do with DOJ's prosecution of this case, and they don't want to create the appearance that they're putting their thumb on the scale in any way. So they're unlikely to say much. Obviously, where things get muddy uh, is where this situation overlaps with the ongoing impeachment effort by some Republicans in the House of Representatives. Just this week, the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy announced that he would be opening an impeachment inquiry, arguing that there are allegations that uh, the president benefited in some way from his son's overseas business dealings. And what the White House has argued is that Republicans have already been investigating this for nine months, and while they have turned up allegations, they have not turned up any actual evidence that the president did anything wrong. Nancy Cordes at the White House. We should note that David Weiss, a U.S. attorney who was appointed by Donald Trump, has been investigating Hunter Biden since 2018. Just recently, his position was elevated to special counsel by the Attorney General Merrick Garland. The news at this hour is that Hunter Biden, the son of the president, has been indicted in a Delaware federal court of three counts tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. Two counts are tied to the fact that uh, Hunter Biden allegedly filed this form claiming that he was not using illegal drugs at the time of a purchase of a Colt Cobra revolver. That was in October 2018. The third count alleges that he possessed a firearm while using a narcotic. I want to bring back in our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge. So, Catherine, what happened? This investigation has been going on a long time. There was supposed to be this plea agreement. What was in that plea agreement? Why did it fall apart? Well, if we head back to the end of July, we had the hearing in Delaware, Nora, and there were two elements to the plea agreement. One had to do with alleged tax violations, and then the other was for the gun charge, which would be dealt with under what's called the diversion agreement, which meant that the president's son, if he abide by a set of terms, he would be able to wipe the slate 
clean at the end of those two years. It collapsed in the court for a very basic reason. There was no agreement between the prosecution and the defense about what it meant for the future and whether, with this agreement, this was the end of the story, it closed the door on any future charges that related to his business dealings. And the judge thought, we can't do that. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, the judge, Mary Ellen Norica, really weighed in and asked some very probing questions about an agreement that, in her own words, she called not standard terms. And that was the signal to me out of the gate that this plea agreement could really be desynced and go off the rails. I want to just mention that proceeding with the gun charges has a certain amount of jeopardy for special counsel Weiss. Up until now, um, Hunter Biden's legal team has argued that they believe the agreement on the gun charges is still valid. So what we can expect going forward is that there will be a legal challenge from his legal team as to whether charges can really be brought at this point. But Weiss has been very clear that he would seek this in indictment and that he was under sort of the clock, which is why it's coming now under the speedy trial rule. Now, if mm -hmm. uh, he has been indicted mm -hmm. um, and what what kind of jeopardy now is Hunter Biden in in terms of right. these, this indictment? Look, these are very serious uh, gun charges, felony gun charges, based on my research. And that can bring very hefty fines as well as jail time. Um, it seems pretty clear to me that this could provide some leverage or incentive um, from the special counsel to Hunter Biden's team to try and reach a settlement on this issue alone. Um, because remember, the tax charges, the potential charges are still out there, and they would ultimately be brought, we think, in a whole nother jurisdiction, either the West Coast or here in Washington. Not out of the Delaware, where Correct. this case is in particular. Mm -hmm. And what about those tax mm -hmm. charges? What are the, some of the concerns with that? Where does the investigation stand mm -hmm. on the tax charges? Well, as you know from our reporting here at CBS News, we were first to highlight these IRS whistleblowers who claim that the evidence supported more serious charges, felony tax charges, not just two misdemeanor tax charges, which is what then U.S. Attorney David Weiss uh, originally agreed to do in that plea agreement. So will they be felony tax or will they still be misdemeanor? But as you rightly point, pointed out, that there was this desyncing of the deal over the fact there could be other charges. And that could encompass something called FARA, which is lobbying on behalf of a foreign government without registering with the U.S. government. And that is something I know that certainly they're going to be Correct. exploring in that impeachment inquiry as well, a Correct. different um, thing that just happened this week. Again, on these federal gun charges, mm -hmm. three indictments at this hour, that is the breaking news. These three counts tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. Does the president's son face jail time? He could well face jail time under this scenario. Uh, it's interesting to me that the special counsel has brought this charge first because based on my reporting over the last few months, this really in some ways is the cleanest charge. It's a paperwork case, as you rightly point out. Mm -hmm. They say he lied on the form. They allege he lied on the form. During the plea hearing at the end of July, he admitted that it was a false statement. So that's not really in question. Mm. The question is, could they plea it down to something less than something that could bring jail time or a very serious fine. Catherine, thank you. Want to bring in a former federal prosecutor, Scott Fredrickson. He joins us now on the phone. And Scott, um, as a former prosecutor, how serious are these charges? Well, any federal uh, fel felony is serious and carries potential for jail time. But that said, these are minor uh, charges especially uh, the fact that you will rarely see uh, a charge of a false statement in a gun application brought by itself without additional allegations of using a gun in some kind of violent crime. Um, jurors don't take false application statements that seriously. The jury will hear that um, this is probably happens a thousand times every day in the country when someone doesn't disclose it marijuana or something like that. Uh, we'll expect to see a motion to dismiss based on the defense saying there was a plea agreement and they want to enforce it. So uh, we'll see some fireworks, uh, but in a penalty of things, not the most serious of felonies. All right, Scott, thank you. I want to bring back in Nancy Cordes at the White House. And, and Nancy, since Hunter Biden has faced increased scrutiny of late, we have not seen President Biden distancing himself from his son, correct? 
Not at all. We see them uh, going on vacation together. Hunter Biden sometimes riding on, on Air Force One with the president. Uh, we've seen Hunter Biden here at the White House. And w what White House officials argue is that, look, the president loves his son no matter what kind of trouble he's been in. Uh, the, the president and the first lady have always stood by him. They are glad that he has worked to get his life together and deal with his, uh, his addictions. And they are not going to distance themselves from him in in any way, even though obviously um, his legal travails have been a, a challenge for uh, President Biden and, and even factored into his decision making when he was trying to decide whether to run for president in the first place. Nancy, he knew that about, this would be an issue. Well, Nancy, what about some of the statements that President Biden has made, some declarative statements like, my son has done nothing wrong? Right. And, and he has said that in the past. We haven't heard him say anything like that recently. So I do think that that is notable. He's more careful now uh, either to sort of laugh off questions uh, or simply say, you know, you have to ask DOJ. I support my son. I love my son. And I think that that is a, a recognition that um, that there is this, uh, this, this dangerous line that he has to be careful not to cross because he's been so adamant to argue that, that he runs this White House differently than his predecessor, that he doesn't try to lean on the Department of Justice to, uh, to go after anyone or to go easy on anyone. Uh, that is the case that he's made all along. And so if he were to be making declarative statements statements like that, um, you know, coming out frequently saying uh, my, my son shouldn't be prosecuted, my son uh, didn't do anything wrong, uh, th that Republicans would argue, uh, and I think even some Democrats would argue, uh, would be putting his thumb on the scale. Nancy Cordes at the White House. And just to let everyone know, the news at this hour, Hunter Biden, President Biden's son, has been indicted by a federal grand jury in Delaware on gun charges. This is according to court filings. There are three counts tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. This is a developing breaking news story, and our coverage will continue on CBS News streaming your local news. And tonight, we will have all the details on the CBS Evening News. This this has been a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in Washington.